participation. Thank you. And um, so our first order of business today is uh, the, minute, the minutes. Well, and we don't approval have approval of minutes. Doesn't look like we have public here. Don't have so, any public yet. So I can pull up. I was very happy when I actually opened the minutes to see how short they are. They are, yes. So hopefully. Sorry, guys. I cannot seem to keep my video on. But that's I fine. Here. Oh, that's is okay. it fine? It is fine, right? I think it's fine as long yeah. as we know that you're connected. Yeah, as long as Thanks. we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here, I'm just going to share like the minutes. Share. Right. So you can see my minutes now. Yeah. So these minutes. are the minutes that we had TSO and we just had a discussion. So, right. And now so, that, that that's pretty long ago. So that's December sounds... 15th and January 5th. Right. Um, Christine was there. Yeah. I was there. Tracy was mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So it doesn't look like um, Tate was not even, I don't think you were part of our committee yet, Tate. No. So, so I think we can uh, we can approve those, right? Yeah. It all uh, our um so we'll we'll approve um those uh, both December fifteenth and January fifth. That was yeah. Hold on. Oh, I see one typo. It's January fifth, twenty twenty three, not twenty twenty two. Yeah. Okay. Favorite. I haven't pulled that one up. Hold on. Let me pull that one up too. Okay. Ah. So, yes, you are correct. Let's fix yeah. that date. Yep. Um. I'll just, I'll just tell um, Amber to fix the date. Yes, yes. Um, but I uh, move that we um, approve the meeting minutes, all those. Uh, any further discussion? Well, and I guess one thing, right, is that um, I would point out, right, wasn't it? No, I guess not. Never mind. It was actually at the next meeting, the TAC meeting that like all of the donor people came. So at this meeting, right, I think it was just Meg. So yeah. Um, so uh all those in favor, raise hand. Aye. Okay, the three of us and you'll abstain, Kate, because you weren't here yet. Have either so one, yeah. That is um unanimous. I'll stop sharing. Cool. Great. So we approve both of those minutes. And um, to get on to our next, um, so the proposed streetlight policy, which Tracy will, I think, lead that discussion. Yeah, I can lead that discussion. Um, so, so the reason I put this back on the agenda is I know that we, when we were talking with the streetlight proposal sponsors at the last meeting, you know, what they told us is that based on the feedback they've gotten, that they were going to significantly um, revise their proposal and probably go back to the current streetlights policy, which is 2001. And, um, and start from there. And I mean, one of their focuses was on the lighting fixtures themselves and trying to decrease um, light pollution from fixtures. And they were thinking of putting that information into an appendix. And then on the question of um, the location of where they would be or where you would have streetlights, where you wouldn't have streetlights, because the original proposal that they gave to the council in the summer significantly looked at, like they, it looked at basing how many streetlights there are based on the zoning districts that things were in. And in certain parts of town, they were gonna, it seemed like they were gonna turn off a lot of the streetlights in residential areas including in Orchard Valley and Echo Hill and Amherst Woods and things, um, that they were gonna focus the streetlights on the main streets. Um, so I really appreciate, you know, that they came to talk to us, right? Anna Devlin Gothier came and talked to us twice and that Mandy Henneke and Anna came back the last meeting. Um, and so I do want to see what they're going to be proposing, but I did also attend the Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting. Um, and I noticed that the, the DAC, that they decided to take a vote just to say that they, they, they don't have any concerns about changing the lighting fixtures and so on and decreasing light pollution, but they did have some other concerns 
including that they would like to see lights, for example, at bus stops or something. And so, and also one of the things that um, Manny Jo Henneke said at that DAC meeting is she said, well, TAC had asked for us to maybe look at making more revisions um, from the 2001 street light policy at this time, but they thought that they would mainly use that policy and then look at making more revisions later. Um, but I will say if I, I'm just gonna pull it up. But there were some, I do have some concerns about the 2001 streetlights policy. And actually, um, it's actually dates back from 1991, according to Guilford, where 19, the early 1990s was when the town decided to turn off a number, of, a good number of streetlights in Amherst as a budget saving measure. And so they developed the streetlights policy then, and then they tweaked it 10 years later and it got approved, but basically the policy dates back now 30 years. Um, so let me just pull that up. So the reason I put it on the agenda was just to see if we wanted to have any, um, if, we, if we just like DAC, if we wanted to make any written statement or public statement to TSO and to the council just about where we, where we stand with it. Um, and we don't know exactly what the time frame will be for the counselors to bring back their policy. Let's see here. So I'm going to just be, uh, just to be clear, you're saying where we stand with um well what it's well we don't know the proposal that they brought to us or the well I not think saying that they're backing away from it. They are saying that. Um but I guess if we just wanted to, well, we don't know exactly what that will look like. Right. But I wouldn't want to comment in detail. Like I object to section three point, you know, section right. C part three, two, or I mean, until we actually see what they do, but maybe just like DAC, they just took a very simple vote and said, you know, we don't have any objections to changing the lighting fixtures and decreasing light pollution, but we do have concerns about safety and, and they gave a few ideas. I mean, we could just leave it at that just to be on the record of that's what we think. Um, I am just gonna pull up, I'm just gonna share my screen and pull up the streetlights policy, the old policy, which was included as an addendum to their proposal. Um, so, I mean, this original policy, the 2001 policy, right? It says that you'll provide streetlights at intersections, the dead ends, when the road conditions are hazardous on downtown streets and on other streets with heavy pedestrian traffic. Um, and so, I mean, right, as a committee, we talked about what does heavy pedestrian traffic mean? I mean, I do think there are some questions about that. Um, and so maybe we just, one of the things I don't like personally about that original policy, and I raise those concerns when we were discussing it at the TAC meetings previously it's just this language here about that the street lights will not be provided by the town you know for private property that seems fine but then for pedestrians or residential neighborhoods unless at least one of the above criteria is met or the select board otherwise deems the situation to require a street light because such lighting could be requested virtually everywhere in town and to me that seems very like anti-pedestrian and i mean a lot of people are pedestrians some of the time <laughs> And we want to be environmental friendly. We want to encourage people to walk and bike, including at night, and to not have to get in their cars. And I don't really see why we have to have that language in the policy because it does say above, like where you're going to have the streetlights. So I would, my personal preference would be to just remove that language. I don't know if anybody else on the TAC agrees with me. But. Well, I mean, it is very, the the language is very general and it does seem like, you know, at the time what they were worried about, right, was that everyone and their brother was going to um, request a street light. And it doesn't, it seems like people are anno more annoyed by street lighting than, you know, particularly in residential neighborhoods than was before. So I don't think the purpose of, you know, I think that's why that situation that ambiguous wording was there 
Don't you agree? Well, I mean, and, no, like I think, and I think they also introduced it, right, because they originally came up with the policy in response to the streetlights being turned off. And so they yeah. want to say, like, we're not just going to have streetlights everywhere. But mm -hmm. to me, if you're kind, if you outline above like criteria for these, these are the places where we're going to be focusing on streetlights. Um, I'm, I mean, because to be in some of these residential areas like Orchard Valley and things, I mean, a lot of the streetlights are at the intersections already of the residential streets. Mm -hmm. It's not like there are a lot of other streetlights. And so my preference would just be not to have language just saying we won't have streetlights right. in residential I, areas. Yeah, but, and I agree with that. Um, I agree with you, Tracy. Christina? Tate, what do you guys think? Um, I don't I don't feel that it's necessary to strike it, but I see what you're saying. And I guess I don't I don't disagree with removing it. So I think it's fine to suggest removal. To suggest removal. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I would agree. I mean, I think that <clears throat> it's true. The the language is a little vague to which is what I had, you know, written in my comments to you, Tracy, uh, when we initially went, when I went through the uh, the new proposal, um, or you know, the most recent proposal from this year, and use well. Um, anyway, so so that's my that's just my concern is like, you know, a lot of this language is like, okay, heavy pedestrian traffic. Are we sending someone out to count that? Are we just saying, oh, well, nobody ever walks here, but there's actually 20 people every night that happen to walk. Like, <clears throat> so, you know, my concern lies more in like, there's no real quantitative uh, measures or data in here. And so it could be interpreted differently based on, you know, who who's looking at it and what their goals and objectives sure. are which I'm not sure is the best, but, um, you know, so that's my comment. Is there guidance, you know, elsewhere, I don't know, at the state level or even federally around, um, you know, when it comes to pedestrian um, use, like what constitutes Heavy versus better. Yes. I mean, there are guidance documents about that type yeah. of stuff. Um, and I mean, right? I mean, the um, and the statistics still show, and and the Fed, federal government, the Federal Highway Administration, and the NHTSA, which is the National Highway Safety Administration, that they're both pretty committed to addressing the issues of traffic fatalities at night, including pedestrian fatalities. Mm -hmm. I mean, two of the statistics I see the most are that one, that 75% of pedestrian traffic fatalities happen after dark, um, which is a pretty high number. And then also just generally with traffic fatalities that even though like, you know, people driving and things that it's only, um, typically nighttime only accounts for say a quarter of all vehicle miles traveled, but half of traffic fatalities, generally speaking, occur at night too. So, um, I mean, those are pretty powerful statistics about how we can make our roads safer. There are, there are factors contributing to that, including the fact like with pedestrian fatalities, I mean, there is a lot of times there is, you know, drunk drivers or drunk pedestrians or, thing i mean there are factors contributing but um in fact the statistics i had seen said that 30 percent of um, pedestrian fatalities involve the pedestrian having like being over the legal limit for alcohol too right but at the same time i do feel like we want to hopefully protect pedestrians in those situations and i'd be grateful that they're not driving <laughs> but um so but maybe I could just. I, guess um, I, I have to say, what was good about the dark skies proposal is that they were just being very crystal clear about what it is they wanted, and 
you know, policy to reflect that, which was to remove light pollution. Right. Whereas this policy, it's not crystal clear to me, you know, kind of what the prime, you know, one, two, three, or four, whatever um, overarching goals of the policy are, except, you know, as you noted, it's saying we just want to be thrifty and not spend a lot of money. But, you know, I, it's just hard to get a grasp of, you know, what the, is safety the concern? And if so, you'd think that it would be, or the overarching concern, it would just be written differently. But I guess that's what I don't like about the 01 policy. Mm -hmm. It's just- but, it's but the, you know, the policy, the updated policy does not, in my opinion, does not focus on transportation safety either. Like it focuses on, Right. I mean, from the very beginning when they brought it up, right, they had consulted with like a dark skies expert. Right. And the PowerPoint presentation, the whole presentation is focused on the adverse impacts of human health of darkness. I mean, of having like light pollution, I'm sorry. So I'm a, almost well, nowhere in I'm there. It's, in, in it's the pretty clear what it is that they wanted. Right, now it's true. You read the 01 policy and anything. Right. It's not actually clear what the priority is. And I understand what you're saying. Safety and um, and light reduction are at odds with one another, and there could be a but you know. But they if don't have one of them. Are a goal? Then you write a policy that you know sometimes one is over the other. But I guess I'm just yeah. It's hard. So, so the, I mean, there it. are there are you know communities like for example Flagstaff, Arizona which was one of the first dark skies community. They have um, national, you know, observatory there for oh, know, yeah. the stars and stuff. And they're very committed to dark skies, but they also have a streetlights policy that reflects the safety as well. Like they recognize that right. they're balancing it. I mean, right, so exactly. this policy, this policy does say that streetlights provide a degree of safety for vehicles and pedestrians, but they come with costs. So they're talking a little bit about you know, balancing, but, I know, it's I like, know, but but there there are some I mean since you know in the last 20 30 years you know there have been a number of places that have developed policies that talk about it better than our 2001 policies so I don't disagree with updating the policy I just have a concern since the beginning that what they originally proposed just had very little um consideration of the safety right yeah. Right. And I and I totally so, agree with that critique. Yeah. So this one also just doesn't seem you know no. all that concerned with safety either. <laughs> so it's just sort of like letting mediocrity rule the true, day. True. So no. to to clarify, Tracy, this right. one is this currently in effect? This yes, policy? this is currently in effect. <clears throat> so they're going back to the policy that's currently in effect and just making some, now they're looking to just make some smaller tweaks to the existing policy as opposed to coming up. I mean, them. that's what they've talked about doing um, okay. because their proposed new policy had the two sections, one on the actual lighting quality, lighting fixtures and so on. And then the second part was focused on locations of lighting. So, I mean, right. the, I mean, this, I have, I mean, here is the copy of the original Oh, no, this is the policy as of like early February that they were proposing, right, where they had expanded it. Um, I mean, I, I'm not saying that the, I do think the 2001 policy should be updated for sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess I guess what maybe it sounds like we're saying is that is that there may be instances where, you know, having you know, the current current policy or even the older policy is very restrictive on where lighting should be. And I guess we don't want to be as restrictive because right. well, while we agree with like the down lighting and um, mm -hmm. the types of bulbs and all that kind of stuff, like that's one 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 thing that it feels like the policy that they're promoting is too restrictive on lighting, street lighting, which, you know, it is important to promote sure. pedestrian walking and safety of people. Right. So I guess it's one thing that we want. 
That, that's what really what we want. One, and I appreciate, I mean, I think too about like driver safety and things too, like older drivers and other people who really do want to have more street lighting at night too. Like I know even myself, I don't see as well at night Yeah. <laughs> in dark neighborhoods if I'm yeah. driving. Yeah. Um. So I think, I mean, my question, the reason I brought it up is, you know, do we want to have a motion similar to what the Disability Access Advisory Committee did just to be on record and say, you know, we support the goal of reducing light pollution, you know, through improved fixtures and so on. Yeah, and the um, type but, of lighting. But, right. but we're still, and the type of lighting, but we're still like concerned about the safety. Yeah. And, and, we, and, we, and we do appreciate too, right, at the, at the last meeting, I think they said that they wanted to get more input from stakeholders about locations of lighting, so. Right. So that we're available to help them with that. Do we want to have a motion like that? Yes, I think we do. I feel like okay. that that gets more to the crux of and and it gets to also. I mean, honestly, I mean, that's what we're promoting. I mean, that's why I think they came to us, right? Because right. obviously, we all, everyone, I can't, I don't think there can be any arguments against, you know, changing the wavelength of light that's used or mm -hmm. the, where it's being projected, right? we all want that <laughs> oh and we share concerns i mean i have concerns about yeah. the eversource poles that are so tall now right. yeah <laughs> and the light fixtures are tall too right and guilford explained that when you build the taller poles you can't the fixtures go up too because you've got all those other uses on the poles and you don't want the wires overlapping and, right yeah i mean i would love it if we could still bring those street lights down <laughs> And not if you have a 60 foot pole, the streetlights don't have to be 50 feet high. So I don't think there's a way of changing that. I know, Jason, do you have any recommendations on that? So that gets really tricky because then you yeah. get across electricity over cable and phone. And yeah, like we, get, we get our section of pole and that's just below electric and just right. above Verizon and that's just above Comcast. And they're, they're very specific about where we're allowed to live on the pole. And yeah, so when the pole goes higher, higher the lights do too. The only and at that point, the only thing we can control is the the fixture and the lens. And the lenses can go a fair way towards focusing the light, but there's still always going to be spread. You go higher, yeah. the spread. Yeah, of course, right. Well, I didn't know if the poles could be, you know, change the order of things or something to like put the. That is lower. somewhat set in stone. No, okay. One of my biggest nightmares trying to get a pole moved is getting the oh. five different companies that are on that pole. To exactly. Oh, no. Yeah, right. Right. Eversource comes. They move. They set a new pole. They move their stuff over. They cut the first five feet of pole off. Then you wait for Comcast. Then you wait for Verizon. Then there's five College Fiber. There's another fiber company. It's it's oh. it gets huh. insane. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess the I only other either. option are like installed street lights, which like freestanding, like that might mm -hmm. be downtown right. or other places, which are different I, and obviously more expensive. And yeah, and it works in like village centers or right. like mm -hmm. reconstruction right. and intersection, and that that's a great option. Um, actually, one of the things on that is that the two thousand one, the the bullet points they didn't once mentioned uh crosswalks no they didn't lighting at crosswalks it says i would like section i would like and, lighting at crosswalks too well one thing to like one little point of reference there is that we obviously prefer crosswalks at intersections because that's where they're expected so yes but we've been overruled and we have some mid-block crosswalks well Jackson. like the one on pine street right yeah yeah yeah, there's, there's, well, and there's you really need to, and I don't think people understand too the dangers of just putting in a mid-block crosswalk. Like if you're going to, because I mean, even some council members have asked me, you know, can't you just put in a crosswalk? It's like, you actually have to make it safe. Yeah. If it's a mid-block crosswalk. You have to have signage. You have to like change the, you have to narrow the street. Barrier. You have to, yeah. Because otherwise it's just dangerous. And people will say, oh, it's a crosswalk. It must be safe. And it isn't necessarily. 
So I mean, in the same time. motion, can we offer some of this feedback on the current 2001? Right. I mean, so the Disability Access Advisory Committee, they said that they would like to see streetlights at bus stops, for example. Okay. Um, right. Makes sense. And um, so I guess we could also say we'd like to see streetlights at crosswalks. Yeah, that seems completely reasonable. Bus stop. So, so we could just say, um, I'm trying to wordsmith this on, yeah. <laughs> on the fly, but so the TAC. Um, Recommends? Yeah, I mean, I guess we could just say that we, you know, appreciate that they're, that they've asked for our input and that they're not focused on the location right now. Um, is going to do along Mass Ave, posing to us. Right. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm actually excited to see what UMass is going to do on Matt. Um, is it? Yeah, it's Massachusetts Ave. Right. Um, they've Where? Got, they've done a lot of projects. Their crosswalks. They're planning these, uh, not necessarily, well, they are pedestrian activated, but they're involuntary. They, uh, what is it automatically yeah. mm -hmm. triggered by like trigger movement right um oh so they're gonna, like the ones in front of the new um the new buildings the new apartments sort of they're going to be they're going to have the rrfbs the yeah. Yeah. rapid mm -hmm. flashers yeah but they're also going to have i guess and i'm not 100 percent sure i've only heard you know, jason vendetti explained it to me he works at umass and, the, and they're, they're actually going to have projected light out onto the crosswalk hmm. oh, so that's that cool. it lights up the entire crosswalk like right. very visibly, like, bang, crosswalk on, you know, kind of like. Sure. And it's not pedestrian activated. There's no button to push. So the pedestrian walks by a motion yeah. sensor, motion sensor triggers flashing lights, plus like this just like, sort of focused sure. beam. That's cool. And they've the narrowed, crosswalk. and they've narrowed the, um, those crosswalks yeah. so my building at umass like i work on the building that's just across from southwest mm -hmm. and they've done um a number of enhancements at that particular crosswalk that is a crosswalk that somebody was hit at mm -hmm. i believe that wasn't the place where the person got killed but um but yeah but they have been working to improve a bunch of that already and i can see that there's new things going up there yeah, no, that's some good stuff. I mean, there's some, there's a lot of great practices. I mean, Federal Highway has done, you know, webinars and multi-day conferences about darkness and safety and best practices with crosswalks and everything. Well, so, I mean, to the counselor's point, though, I mean, there's a UMass is never dark. Oh, right. I mean, well, it's so bright. You can see it from everywhere in the valley. You know. Well, that's the thing too, right? So is that the policy the doesn't look at UMass. And I think they said, well, we're just going to, you know, UMass is a different animal. We're just going to focus on what we can control. But right. I mean, but I, but I mean, I mean right. there's, a, there's definitely a trade off there. It is so bright there all the time. So I, I understand the. Including in the middle of night, you know. So. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Nobody's walking anywhere. Well, I mean, I see it from my bedroom. <laughs> right, right, for sure. Well, you know, like the Cape Cod bike paths and stuff, they do the same thing. It's like activated by cyclists, some of the crosswalks. Oh, cool. I did not know that. It is, some of them are the crosswalks. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of the bike rail trails, they always make the bikes like the secondary <laughs> users. And so they want, you know, if you're, you know, especially with a long bike trail like that, they want people to stop the bicyclists to stop at every intersection. But um, it's good to see when they don't do that. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, I I'm trying. I was just trying to write. You muted. Yeah, I can't hear you. Too. Well, I was I was just trying to write up a quick motion. But if anybody else wanted to, it's okay. I mean, I think the other option could be that we, I mean, we could just take a vote that we 
you know, we support the, I mean, similar to DAC, we support the idea of, um, of you know, reducing light, light reducing light we support. Um, or we can say updating to the latest technology to, um, you know, be dark sky light pollution compliant or whatever. I mean, yeah, but not at the expense of pedestrian so, safety. Mm -hmm. I'm just so yeah, I was muting because I was typing and thinking and yeah, including. Hey, Tate, where do you live? And where is that? Where is the neighborhood you are in? Yes, well. <laughs> or, or where were you living before, Tate? Why don't you tell us oh. that? <laughs> yes, um, uh, up on Northeast Street. Um, so a, a little bit north of the like Main Street intersection. Huh. Yeah, I'm just yeah. curious, just like what your, you know, your worldview is there. I mean, your sure, sure. Town view is, yeah, and what you yeah. see all the time. I mean, when when I've walked um, back um, to my apartment in the evening, mm -hmm. it's not particularly safe. <laughs> oh, really? From yeah. the bus stop um, right. down there um, near the corner. You know, a pedestrian was killed on Northeast Street. Oh, really? Before you were a grad student late at night, um, mm -hmm. they were walking with another student and they were hit and oh my God. in the area that has no sidewalks and no um, lighting Lights. so much. Yeah. Up by Hess Farm. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't, honestly, that doesn't surprise me because I also ride my, uh, I have an electric bike, um, ride quite frequently. Mm -hmm. it's also not great for biking right it's, yeah cars come very close to you you know right yeah so the sidewalk stops like right before the um that big condo complex right the northeast terrace condos yep. yep and so the sidewalk goes to that point although i can't recall i'm just thinking that i don't think that the street lights are very good on that sidewalk no no very dark yeah, and the sidewalk is like overgrown and sort of in the right. yeah. in the summer, you know, it's totally you can barely get to it. Mm. So most the few pedestrians <laughs> just walk usually on the shoulder because just don't even bother with the sidewalk. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, it's so tucks sad. into the woods and crosses a stream on private property. It's very odd. Yep. I'm not sure how it ever exactly got approved that way but it was I've been over there I, it's pretty in. I like the stream but yeah. <laughs> but it takes you over a weird little wooden bridge into a yeah sort of forest and there's no lighting and, and it is and the wooden bridge gets really slippery with like yeah. rain or snow mm -hmm. yeah that's basically way. very pedestrian unfriendly <laughs> <laughs> and there isn't much lighting at all which doesn't help yeah Right. Sorry, oh. so I just so I made a little quick motion. I mean, I can turn it into like a short memo or something. Um, but if we here, I'll pull it up. Oh, sorry, I need to share screen. Okay. I don't I don't write very quickly. It's okay. Um, let me make it a little bigger too. No. Okay, how do I make it? Oh, I'm zooming. I guess I can zoom it like, just so we can see it. Oh, it's not too big. So, all right. So, I was just saying, like, here's my draft motion. So, it says tax supports the idea of, oh, of, reducing. of reducing light pollution and using the latest technology to do so, but we have concerns about the traffic safety impacts. Um, 
including for pedestrians and other vulnerable road users. I guess we could say if streetlights are removed or something, right, are removed. If the counselors proposing the new streetlights policy are gonna go back to the 2001 policy, I know and revise from there, revise, craft the new policy from there, craft the new, oh, I guess we could just say if the, if the counselors proposing these are going to craft their new policy from the 2001 policy to craft their new policy, new proposed policy from the 2001 policy, we encourage them to add crosswalks and bus stops as locations where streetlights are provided and to remove the language in the 2001 policy that streetlights will not be provided in residential areas. How's that sound? And I would actually, I would just quote that language. I just didn't want to pull it up right now. Do you think that that is good? This or? gets to what, yeah. Um, and tax supports. You could just put to do so period and um to the and the first sentence. Oh so oh, to period do so. and then yeah. and no, then that's true. However we are or, we yeah. have concerns or whatever. Or however we have concerns, right? Mm -hmm. About the potential traffic safety impacts. I mean, I think I think we could just say there are yeah, traffic safety yeah. impacts. Period. All right, including for pedestrians. Yes. Right. Okay. That sounds good. And I, I mean, I'll write it into like a little short one-page yeah. memo that I could then just send around. So I'll good. say that we took a vote on this, and I'll just write okay. it up briefly. So do we right. want to vote on? The, what do we want to vote on? Um, I think we want to vote on the motion. Mm -hmm. A motion to um, send this statement to the council. I mean, um, send this. Just one suggestion. Sure. The, the, sure. Last, the last part of this, the, you know, about the language. Right. Can we quote the language? Because I, I do want to quote. I do want to quote the language. Okay. Just, so why don't you will. just put that in quotes for now, like language quotes, so we know that's what we're voting on. No, I know. Yeah, I just I want mean, to make sure because it doesn't exactly say that. So no, I know, it. and it, it's a little complicated, right? Because the way it's written, it says we won't provide lights in commercial areas, and yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. I, as long as I we're. Just, I mean, oh, I've, I've cited it so many times, I could probably pull it up directly. I just. It's okay. I mean, I think for now we can just say that. And we, yeah, and we know what it is. If you want to do that later, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I. Right. Just are you thinking of it? But, but I feel like we need to, I mean, it would be nice if we sent it around to all of our members, including for sure. yeah. here today, and just get a vote on it up or down and then send it okay. along. Too. Um, so we, we can say that our members who are, I mean, we could email the members who were here yeah, and, um, and then ask them to respond. Yeah. I, 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 to vote. I feel like the final the word is we can't, the reason we wouldn't take the vote right now is because you don't have that the final language. Now. No, no, no. I can give you the final language, but I would just take the vote. We could just say who is here. Okay. And yeah, then I'm we could that. also, and we can also circulate the memo. And if people who weren't weren't present want to add, like Kim, if you want, if I want to draft a memo and send it, and you want to collect the edits, right? Yeah. We could say so if we, anybody so who motion, wasn't present wants to make an addition, a separate statement. So the motion could be like you know um, to send this memo along, um, pending any you know minor revisions by. Members or something. Members yeah, I mean, I would, yeah. I yeah. personally, I mean, I would craft it into like a few paragraphs, but I would say that this was the motion that we did. And sure. I just, I'm just looking. Yeah. And I, 
I can add so, the language. So we can approve the motion now, and then you can right. include that in a mm -hmm. longer memo that gets circulated right. to the entire committee. Longer but short. And and Kim, you're okay. So we can yeah. we can ask the members who aren't present to vote. No, but we, but we can, can ask them to we edit. can just ask them if they have any feedback. So mm -hmm. great. Okay. Okay. So all those in favor. All those in favor. Okay. It's unanimous. Thank you. All right. So, so all four of us um, right. who are just, present. Okay, good. Sounds good. Thank you. I mean, I don't know when this is going to come back. What, what is that called? Like an opinion of the, is it called like a statement of the council? Like, what is it that we just did? It's just like expressing our opinion. It's an emotion. We're an advisory committee, right? So we can't actually. We don't make any policy. Oh, yeah, we don't make any policy. So we could just. I'm just curious what it was that we just did because. Providing advice. Yeah, it's a motion. Yeah, yeah, an advisory motion. How about that? An advisory motion, right? Because that's basically, I guess, all we do, right? Yes. That's that's all we can do. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. I, I I feel good about us at least saying something. So. No, and I and I feel like I feel like we kind of distilled the issue. So so. Yes. Down to also what what our areas oh, of expertise. Okay, Andy has Andy his has hand raised. Yes, Andy. Yeah, just real quick, uh, real quickly. I wanted to thank you. I was listening to the entire discussion. I thought that it was really a very informed and helpful discussion, and it was encapsulated well in the motion. So, as an individual counselor, I just want to thank you. Oh, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Well, thank you as a counselor for all that you do. Okay. All right. So our next, next item. item. Well, so I didn't actually, I'd actually like to just go over um, the, um, the act to reduce traffic fatalities because I had gone to the webinar last week. I don't feel like, I mean, we can discuss the TAC priority projects, but I wish we had more of us here. Um, and I wish that Guilford was also available. And we've already talked about a lot of the priorities with Jason, and we know that most of the projects are advancing. Um, one priority I do want to talk about briefly, so so I'll take that back, but just this idea about th that we do want to finish the bicycle and pedestrian priority networks maps that are part of the plan. Um, they come up, they've come up a number of times. And I know the planning board has said, well, do you have your map of the priority networks? And even Anna Devlin Gothier said, well, they were basing some of their recommendations for, you know, the quote, heavy pedestrian traffic um, on where the, where the plan says those heavy pedestrian traffic areas and corridors are. So it's been over two years since we marked up the, the old maps. <laughs> So I do really want to get that done. Um, and I guess what I would suggest is we know that we discussed it at four, I believe four or five different TAC meetings back in 2001. And I have the dates of those. And I would suggest that we have like a subcommittee to just go through those and review them and re-come up with the notes because we haven't been able to get them from DPW. And so it seems like we're really stalled at that point. And I don't think if we did it as a subcommittee that it would take all that long. Um, how do people feel about that? I agree with that uh, 100 and no. percent. Um, so I think that's exactly the right thing in terms of like coalescing and reintroducing the TAC um feedback yes but then the other piece that seems stalled is um you know getting jason and guilford or maybe guilford you know to take on the person and make the project happen so so jason one of the things that's been discussed is just how you know the gis layers needed to have edits to them the layers that came from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, including mm -hmm. some of the underlying road layer, which right. was kind of funky. 
um, but we've been stalled one because there were notes taken at all those meetings and um, Guilford was the primary note taker, but we don't have those available okay. and they were sort of spread out. Um, but then also the issue about getting personnel to spend the time with the GIS layers to make those edits. Mm -hmm. But I, so if any ideas on that, but I think for the first step that we need to just have our the like good clean notes that whoever is going to do this GIS work. And I mean, last summer there was a grad student in GIS who would offer to help or things like that, that mm -hmm. I feel as a committee, the first thing we can do is have our subcommittee and spend that little bit of time, like, you know, one each, each of the subcommittee members go through and, and document it again. Um, and then, and then we can work with DPW or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. it's been, it's, it's been stalled for like, so long. I, so. I just want to offer my, it, it just, you know, the definition of crazy is just, is what is it, the quote from? Einstein. Doing the well, same thing over again and expecting expect a different, different result. result. And oh, Tracy, yeah. I mean, essentially, you're, assen you're essentially saying that, and I'm, obviously the TAC did all this prior to my joining, but right. the TAC already did this once and the notes were sort of lost to posterity and it never gets staffed up to then get incorporated in, then you're suggesting like literally doing the entire thing over again. Well, it's it's looking over what, what was done. What was done, because we have the video and we can just record right. what we did as a community. I have no problem with- No, I hear what you're saying. I just, we, it's sort of, the original version is not accessible to us. I mean, we do have one marked up map for North Amherst. And I just I just feel like at this point, if we want this to move forward. Yeah, we have to do if it. If we can <laughs> have this subcommittee. And as I said, you know, if there's just like these four or five meetings, which I don't even think we spent some of those meetings, we didn't spend the whole meeting going over. No. Maybe we spent no. half the meeting. So right. we just it's have to right. recreate it, which it, it is painful to be revisiting what right, we've done. Because what just, we're we saying essentially Guilford has, doesn't or have something. Or we're not sure right. like where they are in the universe. Okay, but yeah. so my, then also right. just, you know, I don't know, something from you guys, Jason, <laughs> saying that if we bother to go back and recreate our own thing, that right, so. there would be some sort of response at the DPU so. to then incorporate. Yeah stuff and i know i'm maybe i'm overstepping my role into advocacy here but it does feel redundant if the work has already been done but then well now jason i mean sometimes i know guilford originally guilford had wanted to have an in, a dpw intern do it i think and then like an intern right. fell through and then something else didn't work out and and they have yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a number of things computers and even they have to have it like a full or part-time staffer to be oh. a GIS manager. Oh, in, D in DPW? Yeah, because we no right. longer have one. Right. And possibly someone with some transportation knowledge, you know, a transportation background, but we, that keeps falling on deaf ears. Oh, okay, got falling it. Flat. So I think that's probably Guilford's frustration with it. No, for sure, but, yeah. That we tried to get a, a permanent staffer or even an intern, um, but I don't see why we couldn't work with just an intern type level person, um, at least, you know, to get something completed. But I, and I hope to, I mean, Chris, I know that it is frustrating, but then I also think if we go through this exercise as the subcommittee and we get, you know, we put together this list that we can, I mean, the fact that we've done it more than once and we're really working, like TAC is doing whatever we can to help it happen, that I'm hoping that that can, be persuasive so. and getting other people yeah. to advocate for getting it done. I'm know? just not, I'm just not that interested in, in wasting time. Oh, no, so absolutely. We're going to have a subcommittee go back and recreate a whole bunch of stuff that should be already on the record somewhere and is not in order to then trigger the, a human then being able to kind of interact with the GIS, um, I just don't see how recreating 
is the trigger unless we make it so. So then it only has to be that like once we redo it, then we have to do another advisory motion and you've got to go meet with Paul. And then, you know, we go meet with other people and say, give Guilford the damn intern or, or Jason, who I don't even know who would oversee the person, but like, like, let's just make this happen. It's the second time that we've done it. Right. And we know that other policy and other decisions in town seem to be relying on it, but we can't actually make it official. It's just like the dumbest, most frustrating. And we know that we can do it with a sophomore. Yeah, well, yeah, Access I hear you. And the right oh. mentor to oversee so, the person. I get, yeah, I just want to like move on and try to so, do it. I also, I guess, feel like, I just, I'm just saying. And I will say like. We do it you, if it's not, if it's going to be stuck in the same. I, I, I think we can avoid that in the future. I, so. Because of why? Because we are actually taking the notes ourselves. So. Well, also, I feel like um, even if we don't have a GIS version, if we have a functional version, which at the time, the technology was such that I could not do that myself. Like if I had my iPad now, in, in the role that I can edit and draw and do all kinds of things on any kind of PDF, I would have done that then. And that would be sufficient to give to, you know, any of our counselors because they would be able to see it because, you know, a red line would mean we, you know, this is the bike network and, and all mm -hmm. the whole map is there, right? I feel like it's very easy to create something that any person can understand now where it wasn't. And you know, also it's like, if we, have, anyway. if we have the list, like I was talking to Eve Vogel about it because she, she has some students who she thought she could help too. But if we have the documented list of like, these are the streets and the links in our network, if we write out, like just even without the GIS, if we write out the list, I this is the, these are the pedestrian, the priorities for pedestrians. These are priorities for bicyclists. Like anybody, even without GIS, they can look at that list and they can yeah. say, oh, those are your priorities. But, but it's also incredibly you know, so. easy now to draw directly on a PDF, no, it's true. have a map of the whole thing. <laughs> no, and all I have to do is go and because the way we did this is we went through inner, we went through north to north south. To south yeah. You know, we just methodically went through and we drew where our network was. Right. And that is something that I can easily do on yeah. my iPad now. But we, I also, but I also think yeah. for any intern or anybody who might help us in the future, yeah. that having yeah. the written list of like street by street right. is helpful yeah. in addition to any marked up map, because like we might have an intern who's not that familiar too. I mean, I just, I feel like the list version, you could, somebody could go and like check, you know, street by street and like check off each link mm -hmm. to make sure that they did it. And it would be very, very, vi very yeah. viable. Yeah, no, I feel like, so to get to your question, Christine, I, I mean, or your comment, which I feel is incredibly valid. The fact is we don't even, I feel like at this point, we don't even need a GIS person. We can just mark up a map and give it to our counselors because that's what they're really looking for. Well, just out of, just maybe I'm not understanding something right, but couldn't you have done that on a piece of paper before? Like, it was like, massive. The problem was it's massive. It, it's oh, okay. a huge document. It's it's physically like the document was like well, right. Like, so you know, it, feet we, wide and feet. But do we have like, a physical was, document? We were there was, was we were reviewing the map like on Zoom. So that's part of the issue, right? We weren't that's just the there part. where we had a huge map and we're all sitting around the table. Oh, this make this a uh, pedestrian node. Make this. Uh, Got basically it. no Which we like did we, several like in, in earlier like 20 like you know so. 2018 we did that we right. like had the massive maps and we all went around and we worked on them but the problem was in 20 you know when the, during the pandemic all right. we could do was tiny sections on our tiny laptops at a time 
Right. That was the problem. And we didn't have the technology. And so we did it with the Zoom meetings. Yeah. And and not all most of those weren't marked up like on and it was app. verbal. It was mostly verbal stuff. Right. That we I just don't about. quite buy that if we just do it on a map suddenly all the problems go away. No, I want it as They don't go away. Right, but, but it's because it needs to be, priorities need to be officially determined, which we are not in a capacity. Right, to so we need to. And they need to be officially implemented, which we're also not in a capacity. Right. Well, we need, right. that, we need to have no. the commitment from somebody somewhere. We need to have the updated Wait, map let, to let, ask people to approve. Finish. No, I understand. So I just, again, to me, it's a waste unless there will be open reception to it. And what we said prior, when we did the work, there was no open reception. So then it feels like it's died on the vine. The notes weren't taken very well. And now none of us can even really remember. So, so we do it again. It's just the same. There's not even a loop. Because you just do the work and it goes into a vacuum. And so unless there's some kind of maybe initial conversation with Paul, that if we bother to make the su subcommittee and do the whole thing and recreate it, that it will actually contribute in moving us toward where we need to be with the mapping project. Otherwise, I just don't see it. It just, it just feels like a colossal waste of time. So since, since I'm relatively new to the committee, could someone fill me in on like the history of this a little bit more? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I can because I'm the oldest member here. Um, so um, we, uh, what was it in response to? We were So it's the 2019 bicycle and pedestrian networks plan that was developed by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission with stakeholders, including TAC. And that plan was completed around 2019. And one of the products of that plan was a map that shows the key bicycling networks and the key Side pedestrian and networks right. yeah. for prior, like that are prioritized. Mm -hmm. um, oh. And so it took us a while when I first joined the committee, it took us a while to get the GIS layer from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. But then we received it. There were some issues with some of the underlying layers, as well as we didn't think that the, um, the networks were very well represented for what our priorities were. So we did. And unfortunately, this was done on Zoom and not just on a big paper map that would be hard to lose. But so we went, as Kim said, we went section by section and just reviewed what those GIS maps look like. And we marked, you know, we wrote down edits. I mean, edits were written down. They, for the most part, it wasn't mapped, marked up on our screen, like Wait, visually. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, and the main notes were being taken by the DPW, you know, by Guilford at the time, who was in attendance at those meetings. But since then, so we do want to have a final, I mean, our goal here is we want to have an updated version of the map. And the longer we wait too, like the more likely it is that the map can get out of date because we'll have like new housing development and new other types of development, right? So added sidewalk. Time, yeah. This is time sensitive. So we do want to, but what we want to do is we want to have a clean version of the map and we are an advisory committee. So we have to have a clean version or at least a list of, I mean, this is where we don't even necessarily need the GIS, where we could just have a list of like, these are the pedestrian priority links, and these are the bicycling priority links. the Pioneer links. Valley Commission? Like, ultimately, they need the updated list, or who needs it? We need it. They did the that town, work for The town us. needs it. The town priority. needs it. Right. And so what we want is we want a clean version that we can then give to the council and say, please adopt this and indicate mm -hmm. that you support these priorities. And then that document can be used for future decision making in terms of transportation facilities priorities to help inform planning board okay. decisions, so to help inform all saying, those other decisions. Right, right, right. I understand. So, so you're saying we're going to use a different process 
to get the map in use, which is rather than just ask Guilford to get a person and get it all to translate our notes, we're going to redo it ourselves, make the map ourselves, and just go straight to the council and get them to adopt it. That's it's it's actually not that hard to do. I didn't that say it was hard. I'm just saying it's. A I mean, that's one route we could go. That's a separate route than what we had tried previously. Yeah, I mean, I do have some other. I do have some other like ideas that we could yes. go okay. and not not wait okay. for the DP. I'm sold. I'm sold. As long as there's a separate route, we don't necessarily need to wait for the DPW staff right. person okay. or intern to I'm do good. it. But I'm good. Okay. I I vote for it. Okay. Yes. Thank you for the background. That's very helpful. And it's convoluted and it is frustrating, but I'm happy to be on the subcommittee and I and Eve had offered to help though. I know Eve is busy too, but. Have you guys seen our online GIS? There's a markup section. No. You could, to, you could go to the town map here. Let me, you guys mind if okay. I share No, please screen? go ahead and share, but. Uh, how do I share? Where'd it go? I sorry, I don't run too many Zoom meetings. No, it's on the bottom of the screen. It says share screen, and then you have oh, to choose yes. which window you want. Share screen. Um, oh, there it is. So here, share this. So here's our just our generic online GIS viewer map of the town. Zoom in, zoom out, whatever. Um, you go down here on the left. You can all see it, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Okay. You go to this markup section. Um, you put your name in, you know, whatever it is. Um, start a new markup group. You can pick a category. Uh, no, I guess there's not wow. many categories. You do public comments, whatever. And you title it uh, Bike Network. Right. Oh, why does not let cool. me enter there? Public comments. Mm. Oh, new, then you can add a title, bikes, you know, and then, um, and then what's the next step? I haven't done this in a while either. I'm sorry. Well, I so, guess that's an option that we can look at too. So, yeah, and then you can draw lines, you can put in text, you can hmm. put in highlights, you can change your color. Um, but you know, we would have to make sure we had a separate category, right? Or else. It would just get. I mean, I've talked to the GIS like person about it, um, Mike yeah. Warner, who who's a GIS director for the town, and um, well, so he's the applications manager. He's the applications manager. We lost manager. our GIS director. Right. Okay. And that's one of the things that makes that's one of the challenges slightly yeah. problematic. But um, but thank you for that, Jason. So I think um, but does anybody? want to commit to the subcommittee <laughs> but um i just want to yeah okay so jason there we're just gonna sh close out of that okay great thank you so i think the right the next step would just be the subcommittee can meet and it, it has to it just right it can't be a majority of our committee but um but I'm happy to be on it so Okay. It's important, but I'm trying to be otherwise committed. So oh, sure. Well, I, since since I sh should have been the note taker, I will be I will be on the subcommittee. As well. All right, Kim. So I'll follow up with you, and I know again that Eve was interested too, and uh, we can see if we can recruit one other person too. Um, and I need to go in five. Just FYI. okay. Great. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, so one thing. So, all right, so let's go over now. Um, I did. I did. I mean, if people are interested in this, I did want to review this act to reduce traffic fatalities. Well, in, as soon as um, Christine leaves, we oh. the committee will be done. So, is there are there any other oh. items that we need? Well, so I guess the thing is, um, do we want to? So one thing is, once Christine leaves and we don't have a quorum, um, okay, yeah, I guess then we're done. But yeah. Wait, could we could we start it while I'm here? Sure. We can start it. To review. We can start it, and even if well, I well, and we're not taking any action on it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So 
But right, are there any on. other things we need to get? So to? the main thing we need to do then is to pick our next meeting. Um, so I am trying to avoid us having conflicts with TSO, uh -huh. um, which they are in April, they're meeting tonight after our meeting, and then they are only scheduled to meet once in um, April, I believe, which is April 20th. So, um, so I guess one question for us is, do we want to meet? So the first Thursday in April would be the 6th. Mm -hmm. And maybe we meet on the 6th and then sure. we could and perhaps we meet. Uh huh. If we don't need that date, we can. Yeah, I've got a funky schedule that week. I wouldn't be able to make it, but okay, it's fine. Um, well, I just have, I mean, we could meet, the thing is like, I think it would be challenging to meet April break, right? That gets a little tricky. I mean, we could hold off and not meet for a whole, if TSO is meeting on the 20th, then we could meet on the 27th, for example, and not meet until the 27th. What do we think of that? I mean, we're not going to be getting anything referred to us if, um, it definitely gives if the TSO a little bit of time. Well, and that would give the yeah, subcommittee time to report back. Well, that's the thing. We could that's also true. meet as a subcommittee. That's true. Yeah. So. Ooh, the 27th. Yeah. Is that not good either? <laughs> oh, no. I just have a big, the Amherst Invitational is happening. Oh, right. The ultimate frisbee. Yeah, yeah. My family's hugely involved in that. So. Oh, that week, but that's fine. Well, is school vacation week better? No, 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 no. This is I fine. mean it's hard. <laughs> is fine. So. That's fine. That works. All right. Okay. Well, okay. I so mean, we'll... should we schedule it tentatively for the um the sixth and then the why don't we we could yeah I could tentatively say the sixth, yeah. um, but In we could also work, we could also have a be. subcommittee. Yeah. Because right. I will really, we really do need to move the whole subcommittee thing along. Yes, I agree. But I think if it's if we're meeting as a subcommittee, I mean, maybe um, our council member could tell us. And there's less than majority of the members. I'm not sure we need to. Oh yeah, but it but publicly. but we all know that we have time free on that night, so you know, right. yeah. it's a good day for everyone. And hopefully, we could also pull in um, like the members who aren't here tonight. Yeah, right. or any of the other members who aren't here, um, part of the prior conversation, like. Marcus might have been. He was here first. Yes, he was on the committee then. He got appointed when I got appointed to the committee. Yeah. Yeah. So he would so, be a good one too to have. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. So, so, I, well, then, so the next meeting is maybe the sixth, but definitely the no 20th. April 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 the sixth 20, April sixth yes. or the and the tw definitely the twenty. Oh, I said maybe not May. Sorry. Right. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, correct. You I think we correct. could have a short meeting on the sixth. Yep. Okay. So, I because Tate had mentioned that he might have a conflict, but yeah, I might. So it's just helpful to know ahead of time. No, sure. And if you have a conflict, I mean, I guess we can. Then we can go to the twenty seventh. We can always, if we don't have a quorum for a full meeting, we can go to the twenty seventh. You know. So. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so I know motion to adjourn. Okay, a motion to adjourn. All right. So do so. I guess I'll talk. I mean, I do want to tell people about this act to reduce traffic fatalities, but I can tell you next time. Yes. And I did I read it. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, okay. Jason. All right, Thank everyone. You. Thank Bye. You. Oh, Jason. So I have a quick question, but can we just turn off the account, the video? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, where's the stop recording? Meeting is adjourned. Stop recording. Yeah.